Always perfect in San Diego. The Rockies and Padres game three. Rockies trying to avoid the sweep, trying to get their second victory on this road trip. They're back home tomorrow to take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. And then the Dodgers will be in later on in the week. But first things first in Petco today, it's the Rockies and Padres. And as we mentioned a moment ago, Kyle Kendrick against James Shields. What should be the offensive approach with Shields? He, he, he's able to spot that fastball. He's got a very good changeup. Stay on the fastball, but really concentrate. And, and I know it sounds like a broken record, but concentrate hitting it the other way because he uses that changeup as effectively as any pitcher going. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to pull the fastball, he'll eat you alive with the changeup. Yep, absolutely. And he can uh, produce a lot of strikeouts. He had 12 in his last outing against the Houston Astros. Charlie Blackman's going to lead things off. Charlie is swinging the bat very well, in fact. Charlie yesterday, double and a home run in his first two at bats. Here's the Southwest batting order for Walt Weiss this afternoon. Corey Dickerson will bat second. A couple of big bats uh, getting a day off. Troy Tulowitzki and Justin Morneau. So Arenado will bat third. Cargo, who's hit 455 with a couple of bombs against Shields, will be in the cleanup spot. Michael McHenry next. He's behind the plate. DJ LeMay, who slides up to sixth. Rafael Enoa, Daniel Descalso off the bench and into the lineup seven and eight in front of Kyle Hendrick. Well, James Shields came from Kansas City, and the first thing you always mention with James Shields is his durability. After a shoulder injury and surgery way back in 2002, he has been the most durable pitcher in baseball. You can always mark him down for 200 plus innings, and they're 200 plus innings with a very low ERA typically. Well, and the only guy that has thrown more innings since 2007, that's Felix Hernandez. He had thrown 1,820 innings, and James Shields was just three and a third inning behind that since that time. We saw the numbers a moment ago. 41 strikeouts, a seven, second most in the major leagues. Also a 228 batting average against where righties are hitting a mere 180. And his last start against the Houston Astros. Talk about being effective. 12 punch outs on 111 pitches and he struck guys out with various pitches we see a fastball we see a change up and also a curveball he has a two pitch mix with his fastball where he'll use the four seamer but he'll also cut the ball in and try to keep the left handers off balance get an early start too when you've been scuffling you don't want the game to be in the sixth or seventh thing and feel like okay we got to find a way to come up with a, a couple of runs get off to a good start Blackman led the game off yesterday with a double, and it was discussed late in the pregame show by Ryan Spielborg's leadoff double and the high run expectancy it brings. Unfortunately, Corey Dickerson couldn't move him along. He lined out. And the Rockies ultimately did not score Blackman in that first. Here's the one up, and that's way outside, and it's 2-0. And and first those, pitch, 112, temperature 67 degrees. Those are the runs you can't leave out there. I don't care where you're playing. I mean, you might be able to get away with it at home, but not out on the road. You've got to score those runs that are being given to you, basically. Charlie hits this ball to deep right field, down the line, and gone. It gets on out in that little nook that sticks out. A leadoff home run. So the Rockies have the lead for Blackman. Back-to-back -back ball games with home runs. His fourth of the year, and that's exactly the start they were looking for. He said, you know what? I'm not going to double. I'm going to take care of business myself. I just want to raise my slugging percentage. Last night it was a home run to dead center field. Now he takes the fastball. Even though it was away, he hooks it because he knows that's what he's getting from James Shields, and he pulls it into that little nook that you referenced, Drew. It, it juts in from the foul pole at 322 to about 316. He still hit it far enough that it was going to go out. So Corey Dickerson right behind him. He has five home runs. That leads the club, and he takes a fastball off the plate. But the key for Charlie in that first at bat is to get he was sitting 2-1. And now to Corey, he's, hitters count. And now to Corey, he's behind 1-0. Comes back with a changeup. That's Shields' great equalizer. Dickerson fouls this one out of play. 
they the estimated, Rockies uh, estimated that a home run at 341. Right, and that's not normally unless you hit it right down the line, home run distance, but with the interesting configuration of the outfield wall there in right field, Charlie hit it in the right spot, got to trot around the bases. One and two on Dickerson. See if he goes without the leg lift here. Yeah, goes with the leg lift and he fouls off a pitch that was going to bounce. Last night he didn't on the ball he hit to left field. He We've changes, seen him he changes hit, it up. We've seen him hit home runs without the leg kick we, and with it. But with two strikes, we've seen him just rock back and, and keep that foot in the ground like. Some of the other guy, there it is. And he did it right there, and he has a Perfect. base hit to right. So, two different one-two pitches. He <laughs> one time he lifts, and the, and the and the next time he doesn't. And when when you don't, you just have to take your movement back ever so slightly to get some load, as we say, get get loaded. But it helps you stay on on pitches better because you're not moving as much. He just lifts the heel up, puts it right back down on the ground. Simple approach. Michael Kadire always used to talk about, I'm trying to hit the fastball out of the ballpark to right center field. And he said, and then if I get something off speed, I'll probably pull that, but I'll still be able to get the barrel on it in theory. That was a changeup, and, and that's how it worked out for Dickerson. He was slightly out in front, but he still got barrel, hit it hard, pulled it through the right side. His bat was in the zone a long time. That's how you stay on pitches. Some guys will swing. They're in and out of the zone. And he's interesting, be, talking about Dickerson, as Nolan takes his at bat, because his swing path changes sometimes swing to swing. And that's any time hitters are, are trying to keep the same swing path. But you sometimes know, some, it just doesn't happen. Sometimes it's more elevated. Other times it's more flat. That, that was a flat swing path, but we've also seen where he drops almost to his back knee and he's got the uphill plane trying to hit the ball, you know, to Los Angeles. And when he does connect, those are fun ones to watch. Yep. They're majestic. Arenado's behind two strikes, Dickerson at first. So Arenado, the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up Cargo. Carlos yesterday had a walk and he had an infield hit. One for three. Showed you when we did the lineup. He's had good numbers. Five for 11 with a couple home runs career wise against James Shields. Saw that opening on the left side. He said, I'm going to take advantage of it. Solarte, the only one on the left side, he's basically playing shortstop. So if you lay down a bunt in that direction, and more guys are doing this who get the shift played against him. Carlos Pena, who's now in television, was talking about it recently. He would get the shift a lot before teams utilized that uh, a tremendous amount. He would bunt against it. And Cargo's going to try oh, again. Oh, wow. That hit the bat, I believe. Yep, cargo's okay. That's scary when you're squared around to bunt. You know you have all day because there's nobody at third base, and then the ball comes inside. You're trying to get out of the way. You're pulling the bat back, but all you feel is it's chasing towards your head. And Prince, Prince and Field is another it, guy that will lay down a bunt. Yeah, it's interesting because cargo did it. You know, when he first got up there without a count, then he did it again on an 0 1 pitch. So now he's in a ditch 0 and 2. One of those change up counts. And it turns into a bad at bat. There's no other way to describe that. No, with a, with the second pitch, that's why I'm, I'm not a big fan of bunting on an 0-1 count. I know you, there was a ton of area over uh, down the third base line, but then if you don't get it down, that's what happens. You're 0-2, and you, you're playing into the pitcher's hand. 
So Mike McHenry batting fifth. Mike looking for his first RBI of the year and that's fouled back. Originally for Mike, this would this would be the day he would have caught Tyler Matson. But they flip flop Tyler and Kyle. Michael has caught every start of Tyler's this year. One and one on the Kenry at a Middle Tennessee State. Quick a look at the alignment for the Padres defensively. Upton Myers camp again in the outfield. Solarte's at third, Amarista at short. Corey Spangenberg was out very early today, taking ground balls from Glenn Hoffman along with uh, Bud Black at second base. Yonder Alonso's at first. Derek Norris is behind the plate all three ball games. Find spots to get Spangenberg out on the field because he's got dynamic offensive ability. The guy that's been taking those at bats away has been Solarte because he's been the primary second baseman. And today, Solarte over at third, giving Will Middlebrooks a day off, and so Spangenberg's playing. Two and two. Well, leadoff home run by Charlie Blackman has the Rockies out in front. Shields comes back to strike out the side, but the Rockies have the first run of the ball game. Let's go places by clean, crisp Coors Light and by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Rockies got a leadoff home run from Charlie Blackman, his fourth of the year. They have a 1 0 lead. It's good to be in San Diego. The Padres always wear their. Fatigue uniforms on Sunday. They're camo uniforms, camo top. Will Myers having a terrific first season in a Padre uniform will lead things off. Southwest batting order for Bud Black will have Corey Spangenberg batting second, then Kemp Upton, Solarte, who has driven in 18, excuse me, 16 
Derek Norris next, DeAndre Alonso, Alexi Amarista, and James Shields. Kyle Kendrick is ready to go. And the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Kyle's numbers 1 and 3 and 836 ERA. A very rough month of April, save that opening ball game at Miller Park. And we talked about this in the pregame show. You hope history repeats itself because his best month in his career has always been the month of May. Yeah, he just wants to wash April away because it was not pretty. I mean, 836, no matter how you slice, it wasn't good. They had the one good outing in Milwaukee, but coming off a very, very rough start at Arizona, four and a third, ten hits, eight earned runs. Now, in his career against San Diego in seven starts, eight games, he's four and two. Seven innings against San Diego back on uh, the 22nd of April in Colorado. Part of Kyle's problem has been the execution of his cutter or lack thereof. Whenever he's used it, it's been up in the zone, and that has just really hurt him because it doesn't have the late bite on it up. He hit it down by the knees. 3 1 on Myers. And that's back up the middle. DJ was playing there, and he takes a base hit away from. Will Myers. We can talk about infield positioning, putting guys in the right spot. DJ's in the right spot. Three steps to his right. Yeah, usually when it goes through the pitcher's legs, it's a hit. That's what the hitter's thinking. Oh, through the pitcher's legs, I'm good. That's a knock. Wait a second. Where'd that guy come from? So here's Corey Spangenberg. Rockies do put a shift on with Spangenberg. Arenado to protect against the bun. Bun is about a step in on the grass. I say a step in, a step inside the bag once he kind of creeps. And with two strikes, he'll move over to the shortstop position. 0 1, and that's that cutter that Jeff was mentioning. We got that in a good location. Two strikes, and Arenado does drop back to a more traditional shortstop spot. It's incumbent on the infielders, and I don't know how much shifting you did, Jeff, in your career, but it's incumbent on taking ground balls, isn't it, in all these different spots yes. so you know the arm angle to first. Well, and, and also how the ball looks, even coming off the bat of a fungo. Because the angle is different for Rafael Noah. It's okay because he's been a second baseman, but that's not a place that you normally sit for Nolan. Yeah, he's, a, he's been a shortstop in, in high school. He knows the bat angle and the ball coming off the bat, but you have to, you still have to work at it. For me, we didn't do it at all when I first came into the big leagues. It wasn't just until the, the end of my career where there was some shifting, but not the dramatic shifts that you see today. 2 You know one of the first guys that saw a shift on a regular basis, you go back into the 40s, the San Diego native, the splendid splinter, Ted Williams. They used to shift on Williams. Didn't work on him. No, not, he just not a lot of things worked on <laughs> Ted Williams. The shift. <laughs> well, that's what Don Mattingly says. We were talking to him and listening to him talk about hitting. He said, well, you know, and people were saying, well, let's outlaw the shift. I don't think it's right. No, it's right. It's it's part of the game of baseball. But if you if you don't want to hit it, learn how to hit the other way. And that's but that's the bottom line. Figure out how to do it to beat the shift. Keep you know, trying to say, oh, I'll just I'll just pull it through here. Then you hit it at the guy and get mad. Two and two on Spangenberg, who is just under a 300 career hitter in the minor leagues, and he hits this ball short. And Arenado spins and throws and gets Spangenberg by a step. See how quickly he got rid of that ball? I'm talking about Nolan, because yep. he's seen, he's been watching the last two days, Spangenberg get down the line. 
it's a five to three. And the spin because of where he caught it. And then the, just the rocket of an arm to first. Who wants tacos? When the Rockies score seven or more runs, go to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six. Get your Rockies Taco Special. Live Moss at Taco Bell. Rockies up one nothing. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Mark Stout. Home run from Charlie Blackman. Back to back ball games. Matt Kemp steps in. Two outs, nobody on against Kyle Kendrick. Kemp six for 18 lifetime against Kendrick, and he gets hit on the backside. Everybody's upset. He got hit with a 70 mile an hour curveball. Easy, folks. Slipped out of the hand. You're going to get hit. These are the type of pitches that and you don't and that's mind. where you want to get hit. You want to get hit back there and at that speed. 74 mile an hour curveball. Kemp tosses his bat aside. And Justin Upton comes up. Justin. Has driven in four in the series. He has his RBI total up to 18. And Upton in 26 career at bats, a 308 hitter with a couple of home runs against the veteran right hander Kyle Kendrick. And last year they played in the last couple years they played in the same division. This ball is crushed left center field. Corey hoping for a play and it doesn't happen. Two run home run. Upton his third home run against Kendrick in his career. Padres quickly retake the lead two to one. It seems like this whole series, whenever there's been a mistake or a walk or a hit by pitch given up by the Rockies pitchers, the Padres have made a pay. You hit Kemp on the pitch prior, and then a no doubt home run from Justin Upton. He came into the league tied for fourth with his six home runs. He'll make it seven. Solarte his, takes a strike. And a sixth home run at home. It's impressive. Two more first inning runs onto the total for the Padres. They have 26, which is the most in the National League, and they came into the ballgame second to Detroit with 25, who had 25 first inning runs. Detroit's leading 6 4 in the eighth inning. I don't know what they did in the first. I'll have to check. But anyhow, you get the point. San Diego's typically gotten off to very good starts. So the Rockies' live, or lead was short lived. It's 2 to 1 San Diego as we go to the second. This weekend, we've been trying to get a nickname for Nolan Arenado, so it's a hashtag thing that Huey can use when he makes a great play. So here's what we're going to do today. We want you to use the hashtag Nolan Nickname. 
There's 18 options on here. Pick your favorite and just tweet it using the hashtag Nolan nickname. We'll get a tally. Jeff will talk to Nolan about it, and we'll come up to an answer. So it may be tomorrow, maybe this week, but today's the day you need to tweet it using that hashtag. Okay, Nolan nickname. Drew, Jeff, got it? That's how it works, right? Yes, indeed. Good. And I've got the three favorites from Nolan. I talked to him in the locker room today. I said, hey, help, help me out here, buddy. And he said, his top three, now I don't want to sway the voting, is hashtag Nolan No Way, hashtag El Guante, and the one you're going to like, Drew, hashtag McGlovin. <laughs> McGlovin. Yeah. Those were the three. And it was fun because he was going through the list, and he's looking at it, and he's going, oh, that one's funny. I like this. And he was excited about it to just say, hey, I, and I told him, I said, it's not going to be for every play like that last play, last half inning. That's not a that's not a hashtag type of play. That's just it's not kinda, worthy. No, it's just what you expect. Right now, the one in San Francisco, that obviously was a hashtag type of play. That's the play I'm looking for. And we're, we're trying to get the hashtag Nolan nickname. You'll get Nolan. And like it. <laughs> like he it. was laughing at almost every one of them. Oh, I like that one. But those are the three. Nolan, no way. El Guante, which means the glove in Spanish, and McLovin. One and two on LeMayhew. Eno and Descalso to follow against James Shields. That overhand curveball that misses. Two and two. James Field, Shields grew up in the Los Angeles area. Big high school star. Good offensive player also. Two two. Went back to the curveball and it's over to Solarte at third one out. That'll bring up Raffaele Noah. Coca-Cola value packs are back for the 2015 season. It's available every value game for either $59 or $79, depending on the seat location. Four tickets, hot dogs, Cokes, and more. The Coca-Cola value pack. Need to get it today. Rafi's played at Petco before, a little bit last year. Two for 11 in this ballpark, and he hits a... Uh, I pop up on the right side. Andre Alonso makes the catch. Second start at first base for Daniel Descalso this year. Side ball one. Daniel went to Cal Davis. After his junior year, there was only one school that had significant interest, and it was a Cal Davis program that was transitioning from Division II down to Division One. And he ended up going there and he started from his freshman year going forward. It worked out very well. It's just a few credits shy of getting his finance degree, something he finished on up doing. I, you know what I used to use an example. I said, I said, get it done one day. He, he plans to. He, he, he need my no, advice. No. But I, I used but you as, an, as an example because you were a few credits shy, and then you went back years later to Wyoming and, and, and finished a uh, you know, finance degree, also, right? It helps with the online classes. No matter how you do it, just get, you know. just do it. And I think a lot of players are fall into that category. Especially the guys who go to college, because a lot of these guys were junior signs, so they a lot of times have you know, a year plus left. Three, two. Depending on how old you are and where you are in your life with the wife and kids and the demands, all it's hard. I, I get it. But if you have that that opportunity, speaking from experience, go back and do it. 
change well, even up, for the hit kids off the that, end of the bat. That come out of high school, that have it in their contracts. And I think the percentage, unfortunately, is really high of guys that, that don't ever take advantage of that. And it, it's usually in there for the high school draftees, but you know, if they end up playing six, seven years of minor league baseball, a lot of them unfortunately don't go back. Yeah, at one point I heard it was close to a little over three fourths of the players did not use that money that were in the contracts uh, that, that said that college would be paid for. Three two sharply hit. But it is at Yonder Alonso. It's a 1 2 3 second inning for James Shields. Two run home run, Justin Upton. And the Padres have a 2 to 1 lead as we go to the bottom of the second at Petco. We go. Rockies on defense. Dickerson, Blackman, Gonzalez. Discalso's at first. Enoa for Tulowitzki at short. Those are scheduled days off for both Troy and Justin Morneau. LeMayhew, Arenado in there. Michael McHenry doing the catching. Derek Norris, who has 11 doubles already, will lead things off in the second. Takes a strike from Kyle Kendrick. Kendrick's one of those guys that has to have late movement and he has to be very precise with his command because when you're 86 to 88, there's not a lot of margin for error. There's none on the home run to Justin Upton. That's his ninth home run he's giving up, given up in his last four starts. Six to a right handed batter. Henry's going to take a look. He won't have a play. El Guante, according to Patty, has my vote. It's pretty much just checking, and we, we've got a ton of votes coming in. Is El Guante or McLovin? Are the two leaders. Again, it's going to come down. I'm going to go. I'll ask Nolan when we get down to the final couple, and it'll be his choice. This ball wide, and McLovin has it. <laughs> El Guante, hashtag El Guante, whichever one we decide to go with, that would have been a hashtag play. <laughs> When you make spectacular plays, you get your own hashtag. 
He's down low. But yeah, first step quickness and a dive. I can add another person to that list that's growing of people that are in the game of baseball and say he's the best they've ever seen. Talking to Teddy Leitner today, longtime radio voice of the San Diego Padres. And he mentioned that Bud Black said, This guy's the best. He's the best I've ever seen. When you factor in range, arm strength, first step quickness, soft hands, ability to come get balls that are slow rollers or bunts to retreat. Ted one one. Ted has seen a lot of ball games. Bud Black. I mean, those guys have I'm talking to all the Padres people. Yeah, and that's the the thing you see. Nice play. Wow, Amarista, a good hand. <laughs> Under lots of foul that back Amarista. About five. Five and a half reached up. Grand that was bare hand. Anyhow, yeah, with the unbalanced schedule because the Padres play the Rockies 19 times, and Bud Black sees enough in Nolan Arenado to say he's the best I've ever seen. Two, two, three, and two on Alonso. So hitting 550 in five ball games against the Rockies this year. There's Alexi on deck. And this ball in the air to Cargo in right. He's got it. Two outs. We've got one more tweet that if you remember the movie Super Bad. <laughs> Just put the picture of Nolan on. <laughs> what movie was that from? Super bad. Missed it. it came out in 2007. Jonah Hill was uh, one of the lead actors. Two and nothing on Alexi Amarista. Do I need to see it or, or is it okay well, that I yeah. pass on it now? Well, I think you need to see it now because of the nickname. Two hours of investment <laughs> so I get that it's, joke. It's a plane flight joke. I mean, oh. movie. Watch it on the plane sometime. I'll pick out I what wouldn't I'm take Chris to it. <laughs> Three O's in there, three and one. And by the way, Detroit did not score in the first inning today. So the 26 runs that the Padres have accumulated in first innings this year, the most in baseball. Sharply hit. He knows the time will throw out Amarista by a step and a half. So it's a one, two, three second inning for Kyle Kendrick. We go to the third. Rockies trailing the Padres two to one, trying to avoid the sweep.
Coors Light Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. 200 plus inning season since 2007. The Rockies have had only five of those. Jimenez did it twice in 09 and 2010. Padres have done it six times. Clayton Richard did it in 2010, 2012. James Shields every year since 2007. Gives you an idea just how versatile or valuable he is and how durable he is. Justin Verlander, another guy that's been real durable. Felix Hernandez. Kendrick pulls this one foul. That's why that average, it's you hear the pitchers from the rock, he's saying we don't want the DH. Well, listen, 174 is nothing to stand up no. and, and cheer about, but it is part of the National League strategy. And if you have guys that can throw out some good at bats and occasionally contribute offensively, it is an advantage. I am not for the DH in the National League. Me either. One out, and Charlie Blackman will come up. Charlie hit a home run in the first inning. He hit a home run yesterday. Four home runs for Charlie. Gave the Rockies a quick one nothing lead. Charlie not wasting any time in the first inning. 2 1 count. It's a home run. 340 plus feet. Last night was a was a harder one. This ball came off the bat at a hundred miles an hour, and he's going to dead center field in a heavier air than what you have during the day. That's fouled off. Charlie last year hit 19 home runs, 13 at home, six out on the road. This year, he has four home runs now, three out on the road already, just one in Coors Field. 0 2, see you later. Through the hard two seamer, right at that left handed batter's hip, and it tails back over the inside corner. And to me, this is always going to be the Greg Maddox fastball because he, he wore left handed hitters out with that hip side fastball that came back four strike out of the day for big game James Shields Dickerson singled on a change up through the right side see Spangenberg cheating about a step or two now more toward that hole big opening up the middle for Dickerson Corey takes a strike just watching how Corey stood there at the plate. He was taken the whole way. And guys will do that, and you know, some it's they're, they're tracking a pitcher. Other times they just think that the guy's going to throw a ball or, or a changeup or something. I don't want to swing at. Well, he did throw something off speed. But it's always interesting when you do that when you go up to the plate and you say, "Oh, I'm just going to eyeball this one." The ball seems like it comes in about as big as a beach ball. Slows down because you're not worried about doing anything other than watching the you're ball. Just watching the ball. <laughs> and even if it's 95, it seems like it's 80. Cutter. It's nicked and it's one and two. Rockies have lost seven of their last eight on the road after a marvelous start of six and zero oh away from Coors Field. Get things right this afternoon at Petco before going home for six ball games. April's always a blur. Can you believe it's May? Hard to believe because you just feel like you just left spring training. 
Jones, the hip side sinker, wing inside, two and two. Rockies offense coming into today just six runs the last three ball games. They need a breakout ball game. With every challenge call, the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. With the no stride. Albert Pujols does that. With Paul Molitor used to. Jimmy Edmonds. Jeff Bagwell had a negative stride. <laughs> they did. I mean, he was so spread out, he brought his foot actually back toward his back foot. Well, he sat as low as anybody in his. In the batting stance. It's a little unconventional. Yeah, it's not what you would teach. Well, that's just above average hand eye coordination to foul that pitch. Yeah, off. real above average. San Diego always a popular de destination for wives, young families. You got the zoo and Sea World, a lot of activities. A lot of the Rockies players have their significant other with them. That's strike three on the inside corner. Five strikeouts for James Shields. He has retired nine in a row after giving up a Blackman home run and a Dickerson single to begin things. Rockies trail two to one as we get to the bottom of the third inning again. One last look at the Nolan hashtag Nolan nickname and the choices. As I mentioned, Nolan No Way, El Guante, and McLovin were the three that Nolan highlighted for me as his three choices, but don't let that sway your vote. You have some choices. It looks like El Guante and McLovin are the two leaders as we make the turn heading towards the clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, but you probably can do that already. 
Throw him out, Nolan. Doesn't count, but just do it anyhow. One ball, one strike on James Shields. Padres won yesterday 4 2. They had eight hits in producing the victory. The Rockies with seven hits. Rockies had no hits after the sixth inning. The bullpen, which has been much maligned, did a good job for the Padres. Brandon Maurer, two innings, and then the incomparable Craig Kimbrell, a 1 2 3 ninth inning. Kimbrell looked different in the outing last night than what he looked at in Colorado. Last night it was 99. Try to hit it. Yeah, if that's not going to work, the 88 mile an hour slider. This ball well hit to left field. Dickerson going back will make the catch. A couple of steps in front of the wall. So Shields gave it a ride. Long out. One out in the third. And that'll bring up Will Myers. Well, Will Myers had an interesting day a few days ago when Houston was in town. Big Evan Gaddis came up and watch this. High fly ball, deep center field, and off the glove, off the hat, poor head, and over the fence. Not quite a full Canseco, but close. Yeah, I was in Cleveland when Canseco, that ball went off Canseco's head for the home run. But David Hulse in center field was laughing at him, and he tried to come into the dugout and say, yeah, it went off my glove. Like, come on. No, 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 it didn't. You see you know, all those you, people out there with right. cameras? They don't that lie. That went off your head. Don't, don't try to pull the wool over our eyes. Well, he would do things like that on occasion when he first came up with the A's, and he restarted them pretty quickly. To uh, some reporters who try to feign that he didn't speak English, he grew up in Miami. <laughs> Curveball misses. It's one and two on Myers. Well, between he and McGuire, when they were together in Oakland, when Walt can attest to this, is guys would come out of the locker room to watch them take batting practice. It wasn't just your team hit, you went inside. Well, when they were hit, you stayed out and watched them. Because they put on a show. Saw so him take batting practice in the late 80s down in spring training. And it there the shots they would hit, it would, it would like they'd go up and then they would stop and go up again, reach another level. After he was traded from Oakland over to Texas, we're there. He took batting practice with one of those Eastern, the green Eastern aluminum the, yeah, bats. Yeah, the aluminum bat. Oh my goodness. That was those that was our, that was that, shocking. That was our high school bat of choice. Mine too. Yeah. In college. One two. Outside. Hey Huey. Yes. Don't sell yourself short because you're in a category with McGuire and Canseco. Yesterday was the anniversary of your one of your eight home runs. And it was off Charlie Huff. <laughs> and I looked at his home run log that year, and he'd only given up two previous, and it was to Canseco and McGuire in the same game. There you go. And then you went yard. Funny thing about that is I knew he was going to throw a knuckleball, so I went up there with, with, with Kevin Reimer's bat. And for, for Rockies fans, you remember Kevin Reimer was drafted in the expansion draft and then traded over to Milwaukee for Dante Bichette. That's how they got Bichette. But Reimer had a bat that was 35 inches long, 33 ounces, and it was like a tree log for me. And I just swung from my heels and I hit it out in, in Chicago. Kevin Reimer, big, strong guy. The Canadian. I love looking at that home run log because it goes McGuire, Canseco, Houston. What's told, wrong with told, this picture? Well, Is that told, what you're saying, Mark? I told Mark? the story before because Charlie Huff and I played together in Texas before he left to go over there. And, and the funny thing was, as I was rounding third, I could hear, <laughs> hear his wife behind home plate <laughs> yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that good. She's yelling, <laughs> yeah. she, she, she was, was yelling getting at on me. You. She was getting on me. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, Charlie, I just took him deep. <laughs> it's it's really bad when the wives are ridiculing <laughs> your power. Come on. That's not right. It was funny, though. Never spoke to her again, did you? Uh, no. 2-1 <laughs> two, two San Diego.
makes that catch this afternoon. To a new group of Marines being honored here a few moments ago during the commercial break. Sunday tradition in San Diego, great military town. Arenado at the plate takes outside. Here's the Marine him being played. A well deserved round of applause, not only for this ball hammered to left and gone. Off the facade of that second deck in left field. We need a hashtag for that home run from Nolan. That's Nolan's fifth, and it ties up the baseball game at two. That was loud and proud. He jumped on this pitch and said, I'll take it out in a couple seconds. That is a changeup that comes in like a BP fastball. Second home run given up to she by Shields to a right-handed batter. Nolan ties Corey Dickerson for the club lead. A one on cargo. Check this swing one and one. Shields doing a good job, but a lot of pitchers have done with cargo. It is he's not able to get his timing because he's out front on the off-speed pitch, and then you get tardy on the fastball. This ball Sit. fought off the center field, the base hit. So cargo got the fastball up and hit it well enough to get the base hit. He stayed centered on that, so you know you try to Small things you try to build on, right, Jeff? He also stayed inside of it because if he didn't, if he got out and around it, that would have been a ground ball. But he stayed inside, pulled the hands in, and then fought that off. So, yeah, you'll take the, the little victories because for, for Carlos, I walked by today, it was about, oh, about 11, 10.45. He was in the cage working off the tee, just trying to hit the ball, just stay centered, working on mechanics. Yeah, but li listen, he's not going to. He's not going to take a day off and rest until he gets it uh, where he wants it to be. Very proud guy. And he's working very hard at extracting himself from this slump that's gone on the last few weeks. Visiting with Yonder Alonso at first. The thing you always admire about Cargo, no matter how he's going, he brings the same demeanor. It's always upbeat. It's always a smile on his face to the ballpark every day. Same respect for the, the players, his teammates, us, everybody. He doesn't take out his frustrations or his struggles on you. This ball line, fair ball down the left field line. Extra bases for McHenry. Into that corner, Stu Cole's going to send cargo. He cuts the bag at third. He's going to score easily. A double, and the Rockies have the lead 3-2. to two. Mike McHenry's first ribby. Of 2015, back come the Rockies. A large ribby for Michael. Now four for seven career off of James Shields. Once it gets in this corner, the, the left fielders, it doesn't matter how often you play here for J Justin Upton. He's been here for a month now. You have to be weary of what happens and how that ball kicks. Is it going to circle around the wall? Is it going to stay there? So you, you you almost play it more defensively for the outfield. Bouncing ball to short. Amarista will throw out LeMay here. That's the first out of the inning. DJ's not going to be happy no. with himself. I mean, we heard we heard Spilly talk about it on the pregame show. The little things. Runner at second. Nobody out. It, when your bat's over, he has to be over at third base to give a guy like Raffi a chance to drive it in, tack on another run. Because and that run percentage goes down if you don't do that. And you know what? I'd have bet you a lobster dinner. A bat ended after one pitch. I'd have bet you a lobster dinner that he would have gotten the job done there. Just 
as locked in as he is and with his typical approach inside out. I wouldn't have taken the bet I would, because I would have said no because I would have owed you that lobster dinner. I wasn't going to take a sucker bet. So McHenry still at second. And he know it takes ball one. You know, this inning has produced a couple runs already for the Rockies. We were chatting earlier on the air about the Rockies haven't bunched their hits individually. A lot of guys are hitting for a solid average, and they have a lot of hits, and they actually have a really good average with runners in scoring position, but they haven't bunched hits. As Walt said, we haven't gotten enough guys hot at the same time. Well, it, the inning started home run, single, double. That's bunching some hits. And Rafi bounces one to Alvarista, two outs. Shields can go at Descalso this. or pass on Descalso and go after Kendrick with first base open. I would think the fact that Descalso is not an everyday player, came in hitting 111, and Shields is who he is. He's just being the fourth inning, he's going to go after Descalso. Maybe if it was if, if they were trailing by three or four and didn't, were afraid they were not going to get those runs, but they're only trailing by one run. So I agree with you that he'll do this, and, and they're thinking as you get him out, you start up with the pitcher next to him. But for Daniel, you drive in the run and you say, there you go for pitching at me. Take pride. This is when you take it up a notch in your intensity. Rockies fans, you can join the conversation this season. Send us your thoughts, photos, questions via your favorite social media platform. Use the hashtag Toyota Talk. One and one on this Calso. This is popped up in foul ground, and the diving catch made by Solarte. He thought, he thought that Norris was going to make the play, then looked up and said, oh, you stopped. I got to go. Great catch by Solarte. Rockies get two in the inning. They're up three to two. We're having some mic issues with Mark Stout. Try to get those corrected. Nolan Arenado with a home run. 
And the Rockies have a 3-2 lead. Nolan tied it up and then Cargo singled and McHenry doubled. Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, and Jan Hervé Solarte in the fourth inning. Kendrick gave up two runs in the first, a two run home run by Justin Upton. He has retired seven straight since then. And Kemp a little bit out front. This needs to be a, a quick shutdown and efficient inning for Kyle. This had some success against James Shields last, last half inning. Don't let him back in or get that momentum back in their dugout. Keep it in yours. This is pop foul out of play. Strikes on Kemp. Get him to chase. One and two. Still getting used to seeing Kemp out of a Dodger uniform. Two and two. Because that's where he's been his whole career. He's got gaudy numbers against Colorado. But just doesn't seem <laughs> used to seeing him in that white and blue. A little slower pace down here in San Diego than up north in Los Angeles. And that hit him again with the curveball. No, no, the umpire's pointing to first. That sounded like a foul ball. Staying at home plate, like what? Oh, now see, he's... see that that to me gives it away that that was a foul ball he's because a hitter, hit a hitter knows balls. a hitter knows what he's done. If he was going to stay there at home, I think that went off the end of the bat, the knob. White gloves. I couldn't tell on that close up. Let's see if we can tell here. I think it's off the knob. It looks like it, and that would be a foul ball. Not called that way. So Kemp reaches in front of Upton. have hit 14 opposition hitters which goes along with the high number of walks from the rotation the bullpen's done a good job they have not walked a lot of folks twice to Kemp and two at bats 14 most in the National League down low on Upton he hit the ball out to left center his first time up Seventh home run for Justin Upton, six here at home. Huge jump for Ken. He took off before the ball was delivered home. Be the fifth stolen base for Matt Kemp. Just watch the jump that he gets. He's gone. Before Kyle lifts up the leg. Tying run at second, nobody out. Upton's a big RBI guy naturally. See if he changes his approach at all now with that runner at second and nobody out. And that pitches away two and one. 
was the hit by pitch as it was ruled and the ball hits the knob of the bat that should yes. have been a foul ball. And I had. I just look at what Kemp did after he was hit. He wanted to stay stand in the box again. This ball hammered the straightaway center field. Blackman leaps off the top of his glove. Kemp was standing at second. He's only going to get to third. On a ball that went basically 400 feet. He was going to tag, which is the right play. With no so outs. So it'll be a double for Upton. This goes off the end of Charlie's glove, and whatever wind there is up, it is blowing from left to right. So Charlie looks over his right shoulder, has to adjust and go back to his left. I don't think that was going to go out. You can see Charlie leap and just not able to get high enough as it goes off the end. Salarte at the plate. Salarte, twenty seven year old from Valencia, Venezuela. Chase Headley deal. Headley was sent to the Yankees. Headley not hitting very much in New York. Had some big hits this year, but overall, it's average. Yeah, it's average, not where he'd like it to be. Solarte hitting 579 with runners in scoring position. That's how he has 16 RBIs already. He's pushed Jed Jerko to the bench. Jerko started yesterday because of his numbers against De La Rosa. This ball is going to get a run home. It's his 17th RBIs. That ground out ties up the baseball game at three. 16 have come hitting left handed for Solarte. That's what you're you're looking for as a as a hitter. You have second and third, nobody out. Pull it to the right side, get the run in, and move the other runner to third base. Up and out of the strike zone, fights to get on top of it. Pull the left hand and roll over when you make contact. And Norris, the infield's back. See if they they do that play where they start to charge in. As the ball's being delivered home. Yeah, he called it. Here they come. With Norris at the plate, and Norris absolutely lands this one. Two run home run, Derek Norris is second of the year, and the Padres have the lead again, five to three. Every time the Rockies score, the Padres counter. Home run balls have been an issue for Kyle Kendrick this year. It's Ten home runs that he's given up. Next most on the staff is Olberg, and that's out of the bullpen. He gave up three, three in one inning, and he's given up four this year. Strength of Derek Norris. You, you fought so hard for those two runs in the fourth inning. You needed a shutdown inning. And the answer with a three spot. Yonder Alonso lied to right field. His first at bat. Shift is on. Doesn't matter. He goes the other way. Dickerson knocks it down. Alonso wide turn. And Corey gets it in quickly to hold him to a single. Three hits and a hit batter in the inning. 5 3 Padres, one out, and Alexi Amarista approaching. Yonder Alonso came into the game hitting 550 against the Rockies. 
one for two today. you want to get ready for the first fireworks show of the year on Friday, May 22nd, is sponsored by Lockheed Martin. All on hand will receive a handheld U.S. flag. Tickets are going quickly, so get yours today at any Rockies ticket outlet, including Rockies.com. Meeting Don Amariste at the plate. Kendry blocks that first pitch from Kendrick. Amarista grew up idolizing Omar Vizquel. Well, you're going to watch somebody that could pick it. Omar was the guy on you know, Detroit staff, the Tigers. I said it many times before that up the middle, when, when he and Robbie Alomar were together, that was as good a tandem as. As ever. And, and I played against you know the guys in Detroit with Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. They were good, but they didn't have the range in some of the other plays that, that those two guys could make. The scale, by anybody's measurement, one of the greatest defensive shortstops in the history of the game. And Robbie Alomar, the same thing can be said for his work at second base. No doubt. Omar will get in the hall just for his glove. Like Ozzy did. Amarista loops this one to left center field. Dickinson will make the catch. Two outs. Henry. He got hit on that follow through. Watch Amarista. Ow. Fine line. You want to get right up under the uh, the hitter, especially a guy with a good sinker ball. You don't want to be too far back if you're the catcher, but every once in a while you're going to get hit with that. Well, with the that follow, finish. Yeah, with the follow through, when a guy takes a hand off the bat, it creates uh, the bat path is longer. James Shields hit one to deep left center his first time up. Game winner for the Royals last year in the regular season. That's off of Kendrick. He's got time to recover and he gets the out at first. In the inning, a two run home run from Derek Norris after a Solarte RBI. 5 3 Padres.
What I wanted to talk about before Kyle Kendrick got out of the hill was going deep in games. I want you to listen to the Rockies pitching coach, Steve Foster, on the recipe of how to get deep in games from the starting pitchers. Getting the contact early in counts, not having too many deep counts. And I think, you know, right now it's a long season, and this is a snippet, and we're trying to stay positive and a pitch to contact pitch aggressively and attack hitters and right now we're you know we're at a point where we haven't been doing that with regularity and we're going to have to do that in order to not tax the bullpen and of course here we go again because Kendrick had allowed two runs on one hit now it's five runs on four hits through four and he hasn't pitched in the fifth inning yet guys so let's see if he can hang in there and get some uh, length out of out of a start today Well, here he is leading things off in the fifth inning. Blackman obviously to follow, and it's a 5 3 deficit for the Rockies after taking that lead. And you think about, again, little things. You were discussing this at the start of the day. McHenry standing on second, two runs are in already, and there's nobody out. And DJ LeMayhew, who has had as close to a perfect first four or five weeks of the season as one can have, hits a bouncer to short, and the Rockies. Unable to move that runner to third. And Spilly talked about it during the pregame show. You're talking about a, a percentage drop of about 30 points when you don't get that runner to third with one out in the Rockies, in all likelihood, would have had that fourth round. I'm, I'm not trying to pick on DJ no, LeMay. No, DJ no. Ha has been, in fact, he has one of the highest w early season war, wins above replacement of anybody in the National League. He's been terrific. But it, it, again, when things are going bad, they're so easy to see the little things that aren't done. You don't want to leave run, potential runs out there on the bases. When it, when it's almost, you, you, you have that double. It's almost given to you. That's a good-looking bunt by Blackman, and it's going to be a base hit. Nice idea by Charlie. Gets a low five from Eric Young, who, like Charlie, had that as part of his game. So with one out, Blackman is at first base. The thing I teach kids when you're talking about bunting, bunt, then run. Don't try to do it all at the same time, and that's what Charlie did. Bunt, gets it down, and then he runs. Too many times kids are running out of the box trying to bunt it while the, the bat's still behind them. They're not seeing the pitch come in all the way, and they'll, they'll lose sight of the ball the last two feet. Perfect illustration on how you do it from a lefty at Charlie Black. Dickerson a single and he was caught looking on a hip side sinker. Six strikeouts by James Shields. Blackman draws a throw. James Shields part of this seven player trade between Tampa Bay and Kansas City and Will Myers the center fielder was part of that trade now they're teammates Rockies have only six stolen bases I mentioned that because you have speed at first in Blackman the only team with fewer stolen bases in the National League in the early going the Washington Nationals James Shields tough to run on for two reasons. He gets rid of the baseball quickly. He also has one of the best right-handed moves in the game. And he'll do it. He goes down and he'll do it from any position when he's coming back set. This ball sharply hit the second. Spangenberg gets one on the first out there. A lot of the pick on the low throw by Amarista. It's a 4-6-3 turn. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. The Padres up by two runs.
road or at the game, everybody could use a second set of eyes. What's under review is whether Dickerson was actually out at first base as he was called by Ted Barrett. And if you look at the replay, to me, it's got to be ball and back a glove. He's safe. And he should be safe. And now the call comes in. He is safe. Watch here. The ball's not in the back of the glove. We learned that the other day. Ball's yeah. got to be back of the glove, right? Right. Wasn't in the back of the glove. So Dickerson beat the return throw by Amarista. And that will allow Arenado to hit. That's huge. I mean, Arenado hit a home run his last time up. Well, James Shield had, had gone off the field, almost into the dugout, and then was held up by the umpire. They had to go back out there and throw. So it's been two-plus minutes that it, between pitches for him. And this ball hit to deep left. That's what we're talking about. How large was that? Nolan Arenado just tied it up. Five five Arenado second of the ball game. He's got six Easily the best review of the year Instead of being three outs in the dugout now it's Two runs How about Nolan going down and getting that slider and he hitting used it 400 feet you know, for him, a pitch down is not a problem. It's not because he'll take that body positioning. He'll go down and get it. And he knew it. He knew he clipped it. Well, I, t I tell you, Jim Shields, he wasn't... I mean, he had to sit out there for two minutes as this was going on, and he really wasn't throwing any pitches. He's just kind of sitting there. And that's the way you jump on him. One and one on cargo. He had a base hit last inning and scored on the double by McHenry. This ball game seesawing back and forth. Cargo pulls this foul. So the Rockies in five innings against Shields have crossed home plate in three of them. And you talk about Clint Hurdle was big on that, Huey. Score in multiple innings. And if you score in three innings of a ball game, you're going to win way more than you lose. And you're hoping that two of those three innings are crooked number innings. Sure. Three, two, three, four. But for James Shields, he's given up three home runs today. He'd only given up four in the previous 31 innings that he had thrown. Maybe, maybe the, the winds are changing. Petco's turned into the new launching pad. <laughs> it is different during the day. No doubt about it. Two, two. Get the out at first. Norris does that. And Shields walks off. But Dickerson hustling up the line. The review that kept the Rockies at the plate. And Arenado on the very next pitch. His second home run of the day. A two run shot this time. And we're even again at five.
150. It's not just a truck, it's the future of tough by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Nolan Arenado has done such phenomenal glove work this year and last year and the year before. Let's not forget what a great bat he has. A multi-home run game today for the second time in his career. And check this out. Last year he had 18 home runs in a year where he also missed basically a couple of months. Of those 18 home runs, 16 came at Coors Field, just two out on the road. He now has a team leading six home runs this year. That's strike one on Will Myers. Five of the six home runs are out on the road. And he's hitting almost 300 out on the road. So people that, well, well, Coors Field, yeah. But he's hitting over 300, 301 at home, and now just shy of 300 on the road. Kendrick is in that real difficult portion of the Padre lineup. Myers, Spangenberg, Kemp, and anything beyond Kemp is Justin Upton, who's hit a two-run home run and a 400-foot double against him. 5-5 five, five in the fifth inning. Myers with a 2-1 count. Padres have just four hits. Rockies have seven. Bouncing ball foul. Kyle, you had the offense give you the lead in the fourth. You, you weren't able to lock it down. Now they tied it up. Lock this inning down. Myers just trying to play a full season. It's a kid that hit 299 in the minor leagues with plenty of home runs. Status as the top prospect in baseball. His first year in Tampa after being traded by the Royals, he had 293 and 335 at bats, 13 home runs. The next year was last year, 222. He played only 87 games because of injury. He's trying to stay out there for a full season. I forget he's only 24 years of age. Because you've heard about him for a long time. And Kendrick with his first strike out of the ball game. And it's Will Myers leading off the fifth inning. That's a big one. Myers penchant for getting on. And they see one at 90 miles an hour from Kyle. His average fastball velocity has been 88. To 89. And you think it's, it's just one mile an hour, but that is a difference when you're when you're relying more on on location. Spangenberg, one and one. <laughs> Try to bring the sinker back. And he's inside. Two balls and a strike. Camp 
with one out. By pitch is two runs. Yep, Kemp's been hit twice. One went on the backside by a curveball. I still don't think he was hit in his last at bat. I don't think he thinks he was hit in his last at bat. And if you're wondering, that is a reviewable play. His foul balls are reviewable. Good speed at first in Spangenberg. Attempted only one steals. 0 for 1. He can run and he draws a throw from Kent. Come inside. They go away with something to Kemp. This ball's hit the center field. Charlie should get there. Well, you noted that Kendricks come inside on both of those pitches to Matt Kemp. It was something discussed with Kendrick going into this start that he needed to pitch in more. And he said, well, boy, he doesn't throw hard. Why is he going to pitch in? I mean, he's a guy that you know, likes to work away away. You can explain that, Jeff. As yep. a hitter, no matter how hard you throw, you still have to work both sides of the plate. And we saw we froze it on that swing from Matt Kemp off the label of the bat. If you allow a big league hitter to think just one zone, one one location, he'll wear you out all day long. And so for the hitters, they said, well, I'll completely forego the inner third part of the plate. And I'll just dive meaning I'll dive to the plate so I can reset outside pitch. Colmenter a few days ago is a great example of that. It was 84 five or 84 85 mile an hour fastball. He's pitching on both sides of the plate. He's also pitching in the upper quadrant of the plate quite frequently with success. Not just against the Rockies. He's had a lot of success against a lot of folks. 0 and 1 on Upton who has hit the ball about 800 feet in two at bats. Two run home run of the first and a double off the top of Charlie Blackman's glove trying to make a leaping catch at the wall in center. Three of the top four guys in the National League reside in the National League West. Back in the fourth. Charlie's going back. He thought he had it. He looks in his glove. Where is it? And then off the wall. One one from Kendrick, and it's a changeup, and it floats high. Two and one. And for hitters, we talk about quadrants, but for hitters, if you look at their hot and cold zones, where where they're swinging, it's actually broken up into nine sections. It's upper, inside, middle, away, in the middle of the of the body, and then down low in the zone. So they, that's where you're you're pitching to. You look at the hot and cold zones of a hitter. Saying, well, he can handle this pitch, but he can't. So each each series or each night you go into a game that's what that's what the catcher and the pitcher are trying to do pitch to those cold zones of a hitter very few hitters can, can mix and match all of those zones at any given time two out Spangenberger first two one swung on a miss two and two Rockies five Padres five Rockies have lost 12 of their last 15 at Petco First two in this series. 
Well, a win would be big here for so many reasons. Get yourself back to 500. You're going home for six ball games. This makes that flight a whole lot sweeter. You started the road trip. You started the road trip with a win in Arizona. You lost the last two. And then you, you have lost the first two here. So you book in the, the road trip with a couple wins. Yeah, it didn't go like you had hoped, but it does make you feel better when you start to think, of, okay, we've got six at home now. Three and two. Tried to steal a strike on the fourth strike zone. It was off, but it looked enticing. Rockies also trying to, win their, trying to win their first weekend game of the year. They're 0-6 this year on Saturday or Sunday. Upton calls time. Bangenberg off, and this is rope left center field, and San Diego, every time the Rockies score, they score. 6-5. Upton absolutely killing the Rockies. Last series, this series, three RBIs this afternoon. Home run and two doubles for Justin Upton. 21 total RBIs. And that's reaching a pitch, diving for it, and hitting it to left field with Spangenberg's wheels. He's going to score. Well, up they came into the game hitting 327 at home, and now three for three today. Solarte, who drove in a run with a ground at last time, takes outside. On a day the Rockies have gotten five off of James Shields in five innings. You hope, boy, that's a winning number. Unfortunately, the Padres have six off of Kyle Kendrick at four and two thirds. And on top of that, they've answered every time the Rockies have scored. You had the leadoff home run, Charlie Blackman. They go out, throw up two in the bottom of the first. In the fourth, you score two, they score three in the bottom. Fifth, same thing. Two and one. Coming into today, the past 14 games after the Rockies got off to the great start. The starters ERA is 688 and the pen 646. Games. The Rockies had a, a starter ERA at 276, and the pen was 191. You're going to have periods where you have a, a, a blip. But now it's a, a two week period, and it's not, you have an ERA over four. That sort of thing, even in the high fours, you're talking about close to seven. And short outings. There's a length that you need. Second just drove in his 21st run. It's three and two on Solarte, who has 17 RBIs. 
Strike three inside corner. Solarte disgusted with that call by Scott Barry. In the inning, the Padres retake the lead. A two-out double from Upton, scoring Spangenberg, 6-5 San Diego. Scouring my sports page from the Sunday paper, the San Diego Union. And I'll tell you why, Jeff, because you had a question for me at uh, breakfast today, and I'm, and I'm trying to provide you an answer. Oh, there it is. Attendance 12,789 yesterday at the TROP with Baltimore being the home team. So I don't know how that's working out, but Baltimore is losing money. <laughs> Well, they lost money the other day when they played that game with no fans. And a weekend game, as you would know better than anybody, having played for the Orioles at Camden Yards, they're going to draw 30,000 plus. And now they're getting, a, I assume they're getting to the 12,000 that went through the turnstile in Tampa. McHenry trying to get the Rockies offense going again. They've scored in three of five innings against James Shields. He's behind 0-2. High one and two. McHenry an RBI double in the fourth. First ribby of the year for Michael. Christian Friedrich is now up in the Rockies pen. And the pitch counts in the mid 80s, but the fact that six runs have been produced by the Padres may force Walt's hand with Kyle Kendrick. Kendrick's do a fifth this inning. Two and two. So we went and watched the fight last night with a good friend of ours who lives here in San Diego. And quite frankly, I've seen more contact in <laughs> an episode of Dancing with the Stars. Or a hockey game. Certainly a hockey game. Three and two. Yeah. All I can say is glad that we didn't pay for the pay-per-view. <laughs> Lou, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> Next time we run into either Mayweather or Pacquiao, they're buying. Well, if they can run around with the checks that they did, sure. That hit him? That hit him. Yeah, it did. That got him on the elbow. Now that they're, they're that checking down to first to see if it, it happened on the swing, and it did not. Ted Barrett said, nope. Yeah, and, and, and that's a rule. In other words, if Michael had swung the bat and that ball and missed and the ball hit him, it's a strike, not 
and I've, hit by pitch. Yeah, I've seen guys make a swing and the ball came in and hit him in the chest. And he had to stay at the plate because it was a swing. That's adding injury to insult, not the other way around, right? DJ LeMayhew has hit the ball on the ground twice to the left side. Inside on LeMayhew. John Axford watched the uh, fight last night. People watching uh, from the street <laughs> into someone's apartment on the third floor. <laughs> See, we should have loaned, we should have loaned the hundred bucks to John. Overhyped. Yeah, I don't think that's worthy of a rematch. Though Mayweather may end up on Dancing with the Stars with what he. Uh, did last night. All running a half marathon. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Nobody out. McHenry at first. Rockies down by a run. Matt takes off, swung on and missed, and the throw is going to get McHenry. McHenry had a couple stolen bases on hit and runs that went awry. This will be Already this year, he's caught here and has one out. And that'll tie Derek Norris with Russell Martin for most caught stealing this season. Missed hit and run by DJ. Tenth time Derek Norris has nabbed a runner. DJ, if you pick one guy to hit and run with, he'd be your guy. Happened to Norris on maybe the follow through at DJ's swing. I'm on the toe of the foot. Still made a throw that was on the money at second. Checking out Mac, he's fine. And so Mac, Mayhew bounces this one toward the Rockies dugout. Two balls, two strikes. Mac's been hit by a pitch, and he's also been hit on a follow through. Norris, the catcher, is hit on top of the foot. It's been a rough couple innings for those two guys. Tough hit the territory. Had no shot. That'll be a base hit, I'm sure, for DJ. If it's not, then you need to get the official score to go down there and try to field that ball. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Squared up, one hop. You don't know what to do as a shortstop. Your only hope is to drop down, get underneath it, see it at a better angle. Pound on the ground like he thought he should have had it, but by the time he reacted, the left fielder was picking it up. He know a pop out and the ground ball to short. Rafi playing shortstop today, giving Troy Tulowitzki the day off. Justin Morneau also the day off today. Better offensive showings for the Rockies in some time at Petco. Over the last 12 games coming into today, they had scored only 30 runs. They have five this afternoon. And against James Shields. If you if you're sitting there at breakfast this morning, say, okay, you're going up against James Shields, you know, five you'll have five runs as you go into the sixth inning with one out. Well, you, sure. You take, just fast forward to them. Take that every day of the week. Especially here at Petco, Shields had an ERA in the ones coming in. 138, he was 1 and 0 at home. And a whip of 
MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. We watch every out-of-market game live or on True HD. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Look at this Calso. That ball at the end of the bat. And went whipping past Daniel in the on-deck circle. On deck hitters, they try to get as close to, to the action as they possibly can to see how the pitches are coming. I remember Todd. Todd used to seem like he'd get almost by, Helton, directly behind. Helton was so close, it looked like there were two guys in the batter's <laughs> box. And yeah, that on deck circle, that plastic or rubber thing they have out there, that's just for looks. That's to keep tools. Tools of the trade. Well, you can't stand on them because you'll slip if you're practicing your swing. And that's what, okay, you have a couple of the weights. You have rosin. You have pine tar. You have the pine tar stick. I'm glad they've gotten rid of the coach's box, too, because nobody really stood in it. It made them smaller. They still have the line, I think, just because they've been doing it forever. Two on Enoa. See if DJ takes off. And with Shields and the, the different ways he can throw to first base, you have to get your lead early before he even starts the whole motion by leaning over, coming up. And DJ's doing it right. He's out there now because he can react either way. And a base hit for Enoa. Mayhew moves up 90 feet. Now it's the sixth inning. Descalso's up. Let's see who comes in the on deck circle. You have Morneau as an option on the left side, the only one. You have Tulowitzki, you have Hundley, who you're probably yep. going to stay away from because he's a he's your only uh, other catcher. And you have Drew Stubbs, who's been struggling. It's Morneau going to the on deck circle, and it's Bud Black going to the mound. That'll be it for James Shields. The Rockies are squaring him up. And you know, yesterday, I know the Rockies scored only a couple of runs. They hit Morrow hard. Even Morrow said that after the game. He goes, they hit me hard. He goes, we, we were positioned Defense. well defensively. Because there were some balls that ordinarily are or base hits or extra base hits and think of one in left center field that Upton was standing right there. It's usually an automatic double. I drive to short. Dale Thayer will come in 6-5 Padres. Rockies have two on and one out. Calso coming up. Dale Thayer, who was in the ball game on Friday night, pitched a scoreless inning. 
is on for the 11th time for Bud Black. Lefty's hitting just 150, righty's 316. Remember, with all the changes in the Padres' bullpen, they don't have a lefty down there. Morneau is on deck. And they've done that before in the history of the Padres. Done it a bunch. Got guys who were really effective on the right side getting lefties out. So Dale Thayer, fastball slider, changeup. Throw the fastball three, three out of every four pitches. That's what you'll see is his top end velocity will be 92. Fluctuate from 88, 89. To 92. Let me correct something. Kendrick is actually in the on deck circle, not more no now. Looking he over at the, it up. Yeah, Rockies. At the bat rack. I know that Tulo has a helmet on. There he is in a bat. Three and oh on Descalso. He's got to be taken. Three and one. The good thing here with San Diego, where, the, where the, the batting cages are relative to the dugout, it's probably 50, 75 feet. So you can go warm up, but still hear the action and, and know what's going on if somebody yells for you. Ball four. So Thayer comes in, he walks this Calso, and the Rockies at the base is loaded, and here comes Troy Tulowitzki. Troy, a 385 average with the bases loaded. Two grand slams. 82 RBIs. And for Troy. This will be his third pinch hit appearance of the year. 0 for 2, his numbers against Thayer. So Walt resting two of his regulars has some nice options on the bench. He could have gotten more no here. He goes to Lewitsky. And Troy with the bases jammed. Rockies trailing 6-5, one out. And he pops it up in the infield. Looking at Troy going back. He about ripped the gloves off his hands without pulling them off. He knows this was a pitch that he's put in the seats before. Just enough run to move it off the barrel. Well, Blackman has been hot. Home run and a double yesterday. Home run and a bunt single so far today. Two for three. See if Charlie can pick up too low here. Bases loaded, two outs. He had a little lift and separate on that swing, didn't he? His right heel, his lead foot. I mean, it was up and down on the ground. The, the foot was up. Watch how he lands and finishes. Trying to hit it out. It's been just a tad too long in this way. On the ground, the third, and Salante wins the race with the Noah. And the Rockies waste an opportunity. Bases loaded, one out. They do not score. Padres continue to lead by a run.
seventh inning. This is interesting. There's one out, and it looked initially like San Diego turned a 4-6-3 double play. The out call on the field, and then the Rockies challenge it. Walt Weiss challenged it. Ted Barrett said, you know what? New York says we got it wrong. Very next pitch with the extra out. Arenado is second home run of the day. Two-run shot that tied it at five. Our T-Mobile game changer. Now the Padres have gone ahead again, six to five. Christian Friedrich will take over in the bottom of the sixth inning for Kyle Kendrick. He'll face Derek Norris, Yonder Alonso, and Alexi Amarista. On that game changer, don't forget about the work Brian Jones did down in the video room to tell Walt to check that play at first base. Huge. Now Christian Friedrich, his opportunity to come in be a guy where he could go maybe two innings here. He's got enough pitches left in that arm. It's been a while since he's been out there working. A lot of innings as we've documented numerous times by the bullpen. Well, it, it basically averages of late about four innings a game. Christian on Friday night came in one inning, just gave up one hit, no runs. And De La Rosa felt and looked like he had much better stuff yesterday. And he struck out nine, but 101 pitches only got him through five innings of play. And again, you're asking the bullpen, you know, hopefully, to pick up the four innings come back and take the lead work that extra inning two balls and a strike on Norris a two run home run his last time up Fifteen home series for the Padres. They've won. They obviously, they've won this series already by virtue of their victories Friday and Saturday. Three and one on Norris. And a leadoff walk. Line on Kendrick, five innings. He gave up six runs, all of them earned. Six hits, didn't walk anybody. He struck out two. He did hit two batters. That actually only hit one batter. He just hit him twice. That was Matt Kemp. Alonso, a single in two trips. A single went to left field. West Coast time zone. We go to San Francisco, Arizona, Seattle. That's helpful. Rockies later on in the year in September will play here and then travel up to the Pacific Northwest and take on Seattle. In the air to shallow left. You know it going out, and now he's got to come back toward the infield. The wind really got a hold of that. Nolan's going, where are you going? <laughs> Why, why'd you pass me? Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. And now they're both looking up at the big board. Nolan said, okay, you got it. Wait a second. Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> he threw his hands on I didn't see it. <laughs> Rap, he's still laughing about it. Jed Jerko in the on deck circle, Alexi Amarista at the plate.
Davis to pull the bat back, so it's one and oh. Might have been trying to use one of those really hard push bunts to third base, which hits into the five six hole where it's a, it's not a dead in the bunt, it's to slap it by the the third baseman as he charges in. Because again, Omar Vizquel did that. Two games ended yesterday on batted balls that hit runners. Yes, I did. That bunt's going to go foul. The Dodgers in Los Angeles is one of them. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. Use the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Henry always knows Huey that that's his chest protector. <laughs> it helps. Mac. You have her there. Nobody else touch it. That's right. It's Max. Don't say Hondo. <laughs> it was Mac. It's mine. <laughs> Three and two on Amarista. And yeah, Glenn Hoffman walks in, the third base coach, to get a, an angle so. Runner Derek Norris can see his signals. I don't know if they'll put him in motion here to stay at it too, but not with Norris. Not with Norris, but not going, and it's fouled off. Keep an eye on, on Glenn Hoffman at third. Yeah, you've got 125 feet apart. You ever find that you're at first, you're trying to get the correct angle, see your third base coach <laughs> you, pitchers in the around, way. And, yeah, the dancing around the pitcher. Strike three on the corner. The pitch by Friedrich for the second out. Just a dandy of a slider. Locked up Amarista. And now Walt Weiss is going to go out to the mound with Jed Jerko announced. Go to the right on right matchup. Brooks Brown. Rockies trailing 6 5, bottom of the sixth inning.
last chance now to finish this off with the Nolan nickname hashtag. El Guante is leading by a couple votes over McLovin. And remember though, Nolan has the final say, but I will tell him the results and I'll let him know. We'll have an answer and we'll have that nickname coming up this week. And Brooks Brown this season, this will be his 12th appearance. Pitched an inning yesterday. Gave up a couple hits and a base hit to score a run. Coming in off a of Jed Jerko. Close it out, get, get this inning over with. Fastball from Browns high on Jerko out of West Virginia. Norris at first base. He walked leading off against Friedrich. 6 5, bottom of six. Jerko got the start yesterday against De La Rosa. He came in 11 for 16 against De La Rosa in his career, and he won one for two yesterday. Hitting 0 51 against right handed pitching. And that's why Walt went to the bullpen to get the lefty Friedrich out where he's hitting left handers 375. Center field well hit. Blackman is going to run out of room. Pinch hit, two run home run, Jed Jerko. And now the Padres have an 8 5 lead. He didn't struggle there right on right. He hit that yeah. a long way. And if you're wall, you're thinking, I, I'm, I'm playing the percentages. I, we had the numbers 0 50 against the right handed pitcher. He wanted everything that you needed, except for the location on that fastball. It was just over the middle to outer third. And Jed Jerko hits a deep drive to center field. Will Myers takes the strike. Padres now have scored in four of the six innings in this game. And the Rockies have put together a solid offensive ball game. They scored three of six innings, five runs. James Shields on the mound, as you said, an inning ago. Man, life's good. Get five runs. How did this inning start? Five innings against Shields, knock him out after five and a third. The Rockies are down 8 5. I go back to what I said at the start of the day. It's an obvious one. And Steve Foster said it after the game yesterday. Forget ERAs, forget guys who you know, hit home runs against you. All of that is going to happen. You're gonna, your job is to be better than the guy you're facing that day. And lately, last couple weeks, the Rockies starter has finished second too often. And you know Kendrick today ends up giving up one more run than Shields gave up. The Rockies with more work to do on offense. Dickerson, Arenado, Gonzalez trailing by three in the seventh.
despite the fact that the Rockies have out hit of 9-7. A lot of home runs today. Upton Norris two-run home run a moment ago. Pinch hit two-run home run. Jet Jerko. Nolan Arenado has a pair of home runs for the Rockies. Also a home run from Charlie Blackman. That's right. Six home runs at Petco where they used to go about three weeks and not see six home runs. Rockies left Dickerson, Arenado, and Cargo against Kevin Quackenbush here at the top of the seventh inning. And as you used to mention when you rolled into Atlanta and you had a deficit late. Yes, in theory you have nine outs of offense left, but these first six are huge because of the presence of Craig Kimbrell down in that Padre bullpen. Kevin Quackenbush, this is scoreless inning in the seventh against Colorado on Friday night. Came back up when they put Sean Kelly on the disabled list. Kelly out on a rehab assignment for the Padres. Quackenbush last year saved six ball games for San Diego. And he misses there. It's 2 0 on Corey. One for three, a run score. Let's hustle up that line. And the overturn on the what was initially called a 4 6 3 double play. Walt challenged it, got it flipped around, and then on the next pitch, Arenado hit a two run home run that tied the game at the time 5 5. Right challenge, but the hustle and then the, the big blow from, from Nolan. That's what you do when you get a call overturn. Bunt goes foul, two and two. Kevin Quackenbush, big dude, 6'4, about 240. He's out of the University of South Florida. Eighth round pick out of South Florida back in 2011. A lot of guys get converted to the bullpen after going to pro ball and sometimes it's well into pro ball where they say you know what your stuff profiles better as a member of the bullpen Quackenbush was a reliever and a closer when he was at the University of South Florida so he already has that mindset you don't have to change it the guys that come out of college that are that are starters most of the time they, they could do that because they get away with just two pitches. The maybe guy a that, third. The guy that was odd to me, because you're talking about a big time college program, what I'm about to mention. Josh Fogg was a closer primarily at Florida. And then he gets <laughs> to the big leagues eventually, gets pro ball in the big leagues, and, and he was a starter and, a, and an effective back of the rotation starter. The Dragon Slayer. Love. <laughs> that's that's Love one of the Fogger, best. Yeah. That, we ahead. talked about nicknames yeah. today, right, for Nolan, <laughs> the Dragon Slayer. Well, how many did he slay in that 2007 season? Is it every fifth game when he was out there to pitch, he was going up against some guy that had a bigger, better name, uh, he, reputation? If you put together the Rockies' all-time slow heartbeat team, he'd be on it. This ball's in the air to right field. Kemp will make the catch. One out. Here's part of the afternoon for Nolan Arenado, fourth inning. And the first one was a, a, a changeup that he hit out into the second deck. And then the second home run in the fifth inning was a slider. And what's interesting about all the home runs that have been hit today, because there's been five total. How about this? If you would have said the top two teams or the top two stadiums, parks, whatever you want to call them, that are leading or Dodger Stadium and, and tied for second is Petco. Never in no a million way. years. Dodger Stadium has relinquished 40 home runs. Petco 37 on that list. And the other three are not a surprise. Minute Maid down in Houston. They, they have guys who can hit home runs. And it's a very favorable park. You have the Crawford Control boxes right conditions. there down the left field line. Camden Yards, you played there. You know that is a good hitter's park way up and in. Great American. Great American's a bad box. 
You hit two home runs, you're going to get some chin music. That's always been done. Quackenbush up and in. Now the way to retaliate is hit another one in the seats. Even though it was yeah. foul. Look at that. It was it was fouled by about 25 30 feet, but that was a moonshot. Take that. You want to come up and in? Okay, we'll play that game. I'm ready for you, big boy. Don't throw oh, it. Oh, <laughs> he got it. He I had love a block. It. You got a block. Uh, yeah. This ball is softly hit to third, and Arenado's going to reach. Is Solarte couldn't handle it. Base hit for Nolan. Good for Nolan. It's third yes. hit of the ball came. No, don't throw that ball. No, what? See? But he, he tried to throw it. He was blocked by the guy's arm. But it's natural. If sure. you, you give a four year old a ball, what, what's he what's gonna he's going to do? do? He's going to throw, throw it. Every other time you gave him a ball, you wanted him to throw it. Yeah, throw it to me. I'll, we'll play catch. <laughs> Rockies trying to write a campaign. Nolan being Nolan. Our vote should count as a thousand. Well, I'll, I'll pose it to him. Cargo takes ball one. He had a base hit in center field in the fourth and a run scored with strikeouts also. Ball is down the left field line and it's going to drop foul. You know, every year there's stars that get off to a slow start. Checking some numbers from around the league. See what Chase Utley's hitting for Philadelphia? Buck 15. 115. 115. Not even close to the Mendoza line. Yeah, he needs, needs to go on a torrid hot streak to get to the Mendoza line. One and one on Carlos. Rockies down H5, top of seven, one out. Well, Rockies dugout stores is a place for all things Rockies with the best selection of Rockies merchandise and tickets plus exclusive new peanuts bobblehead of the month. Rockies dugout stores get your gear on. That Scott Barry, the home plate umpire, said, What? The Bach was called. Chris Conroy at second. He had made the call. He was. Oh, it was, he, he was he no, he, wasn't he, the pause, it was the jerk to first, excuse me. Yeah. He came set. Going to first, no, I'll go home. Three and two. Scoreboard had it. It's three and two. That was that was a no pitch. But it's still a live ball. Once it it went by the catcher, but you're still only entitled to one base after that. If he was to try to go to third and was thrown out, then he would be out. You're only entitled to that next base. On a miss, Marco strikes out for the third time this afternoon, and there are two outs.
Michael McHenry. RBI double in the fourth. Also hit by a pitch. He's one for two. Hitter's been there, and if you hang around long enough, you're going to be there multiple times, but it doesn't make that sickening, frustrating feeling any easier to deal with. And Cargo has been an MVP candidate. He's won a batting title, and right now, he feels like he can't do anything right at the plate. You know what it shows you? It shows you how difficult this game is. We, we could slow it down. We give you the slow mos, we do all this, and Guys have had success. It shows you each and every day. It's a grind. You go out there and you're, you're hoping that you can square up three balls and maybe get one or two hits. Hard, hard game. Kenry strikes Zach. Quackenbush leaves Nolan Arenado at second. Stretch time on a Sunday in San Diego. The Padres leading the Rockies eight to five. And we'll stick around for a rendition of God Bless America here at Petco Park. Enjoy, everybody. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Before we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game here on Military Sunday, please stand and welcome a Marine Corps spouse, Katrina Pizan, joined by her husband, First Sergeant Brad Pizan. Please sing along as she presents God Bless America.
Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back in the Jack in the Box where Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Tavern Downtown, visit Tavern Downtown after Rockies home games and take two for one draft beers with your same day ticket. Padres leading the Rockies eight to five. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And Brooks Brown continuing on. Corey Spangenberg fouls this one off and just out of play. 0 and 1. Well, the, the Cubs lost at home today at Wrigley to Milwaukee, struggling Milwaukee, and they're on their way to St. Louis. And the reason we're showing you that score is Joe Madden, your old friend, a guy you, you know very well from playing in the Angels system when Joe was a, a coach there. Here's the 01. He is, you know, a Renaissance man and he's very big on civic pride. So yes. when the players departed the locker room, he handed every one of them a Chicago Blackhawk jersey, an authentic Chicago Blackhawk jersey with their number on it and their really? name on it because he wants the Cubs as they get ready to board the plane. Kind of thinking about, hey, your brethren across the way, they're battling in the Stanley Cup playoffs, so we're going to support the Chicago Blackhawks also. That sounds exactly like something Joe Madden would do. I thought it was kind of neat. It is. This ball yeah. line to center field, and it was hit so hard it holds up for Blackman one out. So Spangenberg retired. Yeah, I thought that. I well, really Joe, thought that was pretty cool. Joe was, has theme times when when they wear different garb. He's not big on really a structure for a dress code. Well, Matt Kemp is coming up, and one of the things that Bud Black strived to do this spring, and, and spring is more relaxed, especially for guys like Matt Kemp who know they have a job. It was a little more stressful sometimes for you, yes. I know, uh, in spring training when, you, when you're battling for a, a roster spot. Unfortunately for you, you always seem to earn that roster spot. First pitch to Kemp is a slider in there for a strike, but what Bud did this spring with all the new faces, Kemp and Upton and, you know, Derek Norris and James Shields, they did a lot of group bonding activities out away, away from the ballpark. You have to do that. To get to know somebody other than what you've seen across the diamond, know what, what they've done on the back of a bubble gum card. What are their interests? What do they like? What makes them tick? And it's easier to do when you're out in a different environment rather than your your work environment. So have those team bonding moments. I don't know if they went to a ropes course or, <laughs> or something that Been you there, done yeah, that. yeah right or, or you know one of those other ones that you do out in the wilderness. But maybe it was a bowling. You you just have a, a time where you can figure out what makes your your locker mate and your teammate. What makes them go? What do they enjoy? Do you tell a story about Kemp yesterday? They, you know, the Rockies do this at home, and, and it's and it's in way the fans get to know players also. You know, the last questions and the fans will, and the players will answer it on the uh, scoreboard. Kemp hits a high fly toward Blackman at center. That'll be the second out. And the question was, you could take three things to a deserted. Island, what would you take? And for the, the players that they showed, they showed three or four. Everybody picked water number one. So Kemp picked water number one. And then his, the second thing he'd take, he said, is Andrew Kashner, because I guess Kashner's a big hunter. <laughs> and they had a picture of Kashner shooting a bow. He said, he'll catch Make some sure. food for me. Make sure they have food. Right. And number three, he said, 50 Shades of Grey. <laughs> Needed some reading <laughs> material, I guess. Two outs. Upton has been a one-man wrecking crew today. Two-run home run in the first against Kyle Kendrick. A double off the glove at the very top of the wall of a leaping Charlie Blackman. And then a double to left center to drive in a run. So he's three for three. Eight total bases. So here's Joe Madden doing his, he's doing his press conference. The number 70, the Blackhawks. Joe hit the barber, didn't he? Trimmed up. 
Brooks Brown a 1 1 to Upton, and that fastball covers the outside corner at 93, and it's 1 and 2. Oh, in the comfort Coors Field earlier this year, the Blackhawks were in to play the Avalanche. A bunch of the Blackhawk players came to the game to watch that. It was a Saturday game because they weren't playing until Sunday, or no, it was Friday. That's what it was because they were playing Saturday. Good inning for Brown. He strikes out Upton on a changeup. So we'll go to the eighth inning. The Rockies trailing by three runs. LeMay, who will lead it off. Uh, coming up after the post game show, cue the music. You will hear the Rockies weekly theme because it's another episode. Spent Thursday, the off day, at the San Diego History Center. Dr. Seuss exhibit will do the show like that. We'll celebrate Rafael Betancourt's 40th birthday with a sit down interview with Rafi, number 63. And the good, the bad, the sully, and the spilly. Let's see what they think about April and what happened that month. So that is all coming up right after the post game here. Rockies Weekly. Hopefully people will stick around and check that out. Let's go back to Drew and Jeff. Guys? Hey, Mark. Nice tie. I like that tie. Yeah, I was trying to spruce it up. Get a little spring-like. A little kick in the step. I like it. See what happens in the last two frames here. Aqua blue. We've got the Pacific Ocean behind us. Joaquin Benoit has been battling a dead arm. He's been down the last few days. Yesterday thrown in the outfield. He told his skipper he felt much better. So here he is in his... Eighth inning setup role. He was the closer most of the year last year. Hard thrower, usually in the mid 90s. He misses ball one on DJ. But he didn't record an out on Tuesday in the game against the Astros. Three runs on two hits and a couple of walks. And after that, he said, Up, oh, arm just feels dead. Can't, can't go. 2-0 on LeMayhew, one for three, and the slider oh. backed up, and according to Scott Barry, caught the zone, looked inside, and on the fourth strike zone, it was inside. That's that's a shame. I mean, that's a three-one count versus two-two. Three-zero, three-zero count. Excuse me, three-zero count. You're right. Versus two-one. Balls well hit to center field, really well hit, carrying nearly the wall, and Will Myers makes the catch. Balls flying today like yes. you rarely see it out here. Six home runs have been hit. Here's our century link link to what's next. A good look at a large section of May. Rockies home for six, Diamondbacks and Dodgers are in. No television Wednesday afternoon. Thursday's an off day, and then the Rockies will go. To LA and hang for a while. First in Orange County for a couple days and then four at Dodger Stadium. We'll have them all. And then finally, uh, 
outside the division when the Rockies return home they'll take on the Philadelphia Phillies or Ryan Sandberg. The Phillies talk about a team that's also struggling. They're not. They're eight and seventeen. Rafael Enoa fouls it off of Derek Norris. <laughs> Ow. Toe. Well, those are the scary ones. Off the, the mask. There. Or either down right square, like by the nose area, or down on the chin. That's when you think about ringing the bell, and, and, and not in a good way when you're talking about those are the, the concussion type. Rockies would love to produce some traffic here and get Morneau to the plate. Morneau, big bat off the bench today for Walt Weiss. Tulowitzki hit in the sixth inning with the bases loaded and one out. He pinch hit and popped out. One out in the eighth. He Noah, then Descalso, then the pitcher's spot. Two and two, Raphael. A base hit his last time up. He's one for three. It's good to get three or four at bats if you're Raphael. Most of them, at least on this road trip, have come pinch hitting. Who wants tacos? Folks, follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special and the Rockies score seven or more runs. So Arizona and LA are in extra innings. Zip, zip. The Anderson brothers started. Brett and Chase. I didn't realize they were brothers. No, they're not brothers. Watching the ticker before the day and before the day game started, and saw that Anderson versus Anderson. Giants beat the Angels today, five nothing, two two. On Rafael Enoa against Joaquin Benoit. Two outs, Daniel Descalso will take his turn. Or no. No, it's Stubbs going to the on deck circle. First time for Daniel to face Benoit. Benoit, one of the few. Late inning relievers that when he comes in a ball game, he'll work out of the wide This Descalso 0 for 2 and a walk. Rockies got a home run to lead off the ball game from Charlie Blackman, but then the Padres scored two in the bottom of the first, and that's been the theme of the ball game. Rockies came back with a two spot in the fourth to take a 3 2 lead. And in the bottom of the fourth, the Padres countered. They got three. Rockies came right back top of the fifth inning. They tied it up on the Arenado two run home run, a second of the ball game. Bottom of the fifth inning, Padres score a run, 6 5. And then they added on two in the bottom of the sixth. They're up 8 5 here in the eighth inning. Not only that, the, the freebies have also scored. For San Diego. I'm talking about the two hit by pitches and then the one walk to lead off to the sixth inning to Derek Morris. Those three guys are coming around to score. And unfortunately, again, the Rockies failed to get a quote unquote quality start. They have the fewest quality starts so far in baseball. And this Calso strikes out against Benoit. It's a one, two, three, eighth inning for Joaquin Benoit. 8-5 Padres.
to five. Nolan Arenado, a couple of home runs, including a two run shot, but Justin Upton has driven in three. A couple of doubles and a home run for Upton. Jed Jerko, a pinch hit two run home run against Brooks Brown. On the hill now, the bottom of the eighth inning, making his major league debut is Kenny Roberts. Found out the other day. About 1230 at night called his parents said I'm going to be called up to the big leagues and now making his major league debut and they can never take this moment away from you. Remember it forever. You've worked so hard you've dreamt for so many days and growing up the minor leagues are you ever going to make it is it going to be worth it. And his first. Uh, a couple of major league pitches will come to Solarte, Jan Herbie Solarte. It's one and one. And this ball in the air to deep center, and Drew Stubbs going to help him out, tracks it down. Derek Norris will be next. Everybody has a call up story. Here is Ken Roberts in his own words. So we were, it was after the game, my wife and I were already back at the apartment. We were, I mean, we were changed, ready about to go to bed, and it was 12.30, and our manager called. And uh, I actually didn't answer it because I didn't have the number saved at the time. And then he texted me and was like, call me. So I called him, and uh, he's like, kind of gave me a little roundabout, like acting like I wasn't paying attention to the meeting we had today. And I was like, no, that's not right. And he was like, no, you need to come to the field and pack up your bags. You're going to the big leagues. So... Rushed over there, my wife rushed over there, picked up my bags, talked to the manager and Daryl Scott some. And they came back and just packed up our clothes at the apartment and I think we finally got to bed right around two thirty or three. What time night. was your flight? My flight went until ten, so that was nice. I think we got up right around seven or so and it was so it was good that we had a little bit later. It we wasn't six o'clock flight, so that helped. Were you able to sleep? I think so. I think I got a I think I was on and off for about an hour or two. So it was it was definitely a fun night though. Everybody's got one of those stories that has the rare distinction of playing in the big leagues. I just want to say welcome to the fraternity. Yep. Norris at the plate. Just missed inside. It's an all middle Tennessee State <laughs> battery. How about that? You got Ken Roberts from Middle Tennessee State and Michael McHenry from Middle Tennessee State. I saw Mac this morning. Here's a 2 2. Just missed 3 and 2. Asked him about Roberts. And he said he's a great kid. He's really excited for him. Well, it helps, too, to have that because they've worked out together. Both going to the same university. So you have that comfort level throwing to somebody that you've been there with. Foul ground. Descalso makes the catch. Blackman has moved from center to right. Stubbs is in the ball game. Cargo's come out. Don't know what that's all about. Probably just a double switch. Well, it, it wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense there because Cargo's you know do a fifth next inning. In the ninth, and you hope that, that you get to that. So maybe it, let's hope it's nothing else. Yeah. It, you know, there's no there's no reason to double switch right now. But the only thing is, you can't take a Noah Descalso or DJ out of the game because or you, you could I mean, take you Descalso, Descalso out. but you couldn't have done the other two. Roberts hits Alonso. Watching Alonzo and the way he was holding his arm down. Give a peek out to the pitcher's mound. 
wasn't intentional. But you're right, Drew. You had the, you did have the double switch possibility with Descalso, but you couldn't have done it up the middle because you don't have any more infielders. But, there's, already hit. but you would, in this situation, you wouldn't double switch typically. Anyhow, you just pinch hit next day. At the day, bottom, you, half in the the bottom of the Roberts leads off, and you and you pinch hit for him. Yep. Strike one on Amarista. Two outs. Alonso at first. Good curveball. Really good curveball. Ken has a two seam, a four seam on his fastball. Curveball, as we see on this, where it takes that finger off and then just uses the middle knuckle to, to bring the rotation. That's good, good defense right Great there inning. by Enoa, and the Rockies had moved him with two strikes right to the middle of the diamond. So Enoa throws out Amarista. Roberts makes a successful. By Mike Shaw Subaru, always our lowest price and sales and service guaranteed. And by StubHub, Rockies fans, next time you need great seats, get to StubHub without the surprise fees. Adjacent to the Gaslamp Quarter District. The Rockies in the ninth inning and need to rally against Craig Kimbrell. They're down three runs. We go back to Denver. Here's Jenny Kavnar. Jenny? All right, Jenny, Craig Kimbrell yesterday earned his seventh save and seven opportunities, a one, two, three, ninth inning in which he had two strikeouts, kind of standard fare for Kimbrell. It took him 14 pitches, 11 for strikes from Kimbrell last night. A lot of hard fastballs, 98 to 99. Go along with the, the slider that is very imposing. One defensive change for the Padres. Will Middlebrooks is at third, and Solarte goes from third to first, so Alonso comes out. And that's, that's because and Alonso he got has good hit. hands. Yeah, that's because he, he got, he got hit. hit. Alonso is a natural first baseman. You, they wouldn't. Well, they they wouldn't do that. Ordinarily. They put Alonzo in last night for defense. So it tells you that he's not coming out unless he was hurt. He was on the back of the shoulder hit by pitch. Drew Stubbs, who just came into the ball game, and Drew takes ball one. Stubbs got his first hit of the year on Friday. Hit a changeup for a home run. Strike at 97. For J. 
Jimbrell. We, we, we discussed the unusual way he takes the, the sign. There's nothing unusual about the delivery. The big, powerful legs. Well, Carlos Gonzalez is in the Rockies dugout, seated next to head trainer Keith Duggar. Fastball, another foul ball from Stubbs. Blackman Dickerson on deck. Rockies five runs, ten hits, no errors. Eight runs, seven hits, no errors for San Diego. First 10,000 fans through the gates on Sunday, May 10th, will receive a Mother's Day Infinity Scarf sponsored by University of Colorado Health. That's what it looks like, the Infinity Scarf. Charlie has had a good series. Home run and a single today, bunt single. Home run and a double yesterday. And Charlie may have hit another one. Take a good look. You won't see this one for long. Blackman with his second home run of the day. It's eight to six. He and Arenado multi-home run days. I know what you're thinking, Hugh. You go into a day and you say, all right, Blackman's going to hit a pair. Arenado's going to hit a pair at Petco. You like your chances to win, don't you? Yeah, and against the guys named James Shields and Craig Kimbrell. I mean, another gorgeous swing from Charlie Blackman. Hits it into the second decker of seats in right field. The two two run home run or two home runs by Nolan, two by Charlie. Last player to have multi home runs here at Petco. That was Pablo Sandoval when he had three home runs in one game. Well, Blackman becomes the 41st opponent, and Nolan was the 40th to come in here in 11 years and have a multi home run game. It just doesn't happen. Strikes on Dickerson. Base hit came back in the first inning. Slider and that's bounce foul. Didn't even foul that off. Can't help you there. Well, I know because it's 86 and it looked like a big curveball that. Was in the zone and then dropped towards the ankles. That was Helton esque. Four time All Star Craig Kimbrell. Huntsville, Alabama. Here's the 0 2. Under the hands. It's a pitcher's pitch. Craig Kimbrell. No movement. It was straight. Miles per hour behind him. So Nolan Arenado. Home run in the fourth. Solo shot. Two run home run in the fifth. And an infield hit. Slider for a strike. Trying to get. Nick Hundley, who's in the on deck circle, not Justin Morneau. That's strange. And if you can get to Hundley, he'd be the tying run. And maybe it's Hundley because He's he hit. has that home run against Kimbrough. 
to the opposite field at Coors Field. First things first, Arenado's got to reach. 8 6 San Diego, 1 1. Outside, 2 and 1 on Nolan. This much they're battling, they're not going down without a fight. Nolan has just picked the ball up well the last two pitches from Kimball. And it's a high fly ball to right field. Kemp has it, and the Padres have swept the Rockies. The final score this afternoon, eight to six. Despite a pair of home runs from Nolan Arenado, a pair of home runs from Charlie Blackman, the Rockies lose five of six on this NL well, NL West trip through Arizona and San Diego. The Rockies fall to 11 and 13. The Padres improve to 14 and 12. James Shields gets the victory. He's three and zero. Oh. Kyle Kendrick takes the loss. He is one and four. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game came from a guy who didn't start. Jed Jerko has been struggling with the bat, especially against right-handed pitching. Comes off the bench and hits a two-run home run against Brooks Brown that extended a 6-5 lead to 8-5.